welcome to Osem awesome 1M. In 2011, a group of people from different parts of the Highlands province were left homeless after their homes were torched by a mob dominated by Moravians at Bumayong. Families are now living in a care centre along Lay's Independence Drive. Six people have died of suspected tuberculosis and school children have dropped out of school. Bethany Harriman with this report. The care centre located along Independence Drive. It was established in 2012 after the national government political impasse forced over 1,000 men and women away from the Igam army barracks, the location of the first care centre. But these people have a story that is similar to many other places around Papua New Guinea that experience some sort of ethnic clashes. In Bulolo, the sixth generation Sipik people, who call themselves Bulolo natives, were left homeless after their homes were torched by Morobians, who accused them of being responsible for serious crimes, including murder in Bulolo town. In Lei, this is the care center for people who were displaced by Morobians in the 2011 uprising. Morobians mobilized and burnt down their homes after they blamed them for the increase of crime in Eriku, Main Market and the town bus stops. Where country, citizen in this, no citizens, no country, only face him, same kind of problem. Now government yet, you know, Nablo look out him. Case no people lawyer, Manam, Manam Highlanders, lo Manam, online lo Bulolo. Now, me plus two, me plus face him, same kind of problem. Government will go ahead and feed him online outside he face him natural disasters. But lo Mibla a man-made disaster, but it is a disaster. Simon Kwame is one of the victims of the 2011 unrest and has become the spokesperson for the care center. Simon explained that the Lay city authorities and Morobe government didn't agree to a planned protest march by Morobians to stop crime. A violent uprising followed the next day at Bumayong, six kilometers away from Lay City. Only thing thing was try come go and tell the town, but time government no give me permission. All no not make him so. Me plow all islands suicide reside on top of Bumayong. Only some opportunity, this opportunity, and only bagara me plow. Six people were murdered, and many homes were burnt down, displacing women and children who are now living in this care center. It's been almost four years and there have been babies born here. And those that were younger have learned to crawl and walk. Grace Peter speaks for the women in the care center who have struggled in the last three years. They had to flee for their lives to Igam and later settled here, where their makeshift homes built of canvas was torched in two separate incidents. Some have given birth at the care center while others have miscarried. The realities faced by these people who are fourth generation Highlanders living in Lay City is daunting, their future unknown. They have lost their ties to their homeland and have become natives of Lay City. It's next to impossible to force them back to their provinces in the Highlands region without the proper links to land and culture. Their only hope for the future is their children, who should be getting educated in schools. But without jobs for parents and homes, many have withdrawn from school and they all spend their days sitting around the care center. 
no got light lo stop no got good pela kai kai and no no more life falls and me process mm, mm, process stop before one time brata susana deri mami me plus have stop one time one one pela kai add pela life me pela stop now also na now me pela wait as all long government by lp me pela Grace Peters' daughter, Shelley, explains just how difficult it is to get an education without a proper home with electricity and water. School children have their own sad story. Those that still remain at school are struggling to cope. I got 13 for Christmas. I started grade 6 law, only primary school. I got a good job behind every law, 2011. Me plus me plus stop long kesenta you know got good fellas I will sleep long me fella all pickinini all man mama pickinini all man young fella lapun all liglik pickinini ogara me all me plus pine and big club ogara in cell or this la place me plus stop so me plus sing out all same government blo morobe or prime minister national government all must come down and look at me plus. The future looks dim for their children. They had a better chance almost four years ago. They had homes and some sort of background to fall onto. Their only hope for a brighter future now is through education that has become difficult to pursue under these difficult circumstances. Following the 2011 Morobe uprise, the displaced women and children are still struggling as they live without water and proper sanitation. They now live in makeshift houses covered by canvas and the walls made up of plastic bags and cardboard boxes. The rooms within these shelters are big enough for one person but is shared with up to 10 people. In this segment, families take us into their makeshift homes to show us how they live. Grace Peter walks to her house. She has three children. She is from the Eastern Highlands. Her eldest daughter goes to primary school. Grace and her husband share their home with seven other family members, including uncles and aunts. First born, okay, second. Okay, now I'm going to the sun, Okay, now I'm going to the sun, Okay, girl, blow me. Okay. Now I'm going to the uncle, Okay, 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 now I'm going to Money not so come night, me give more hege lawyer now. We don't know what I was sleeping. I block up any map, lost sleep, or Mrs. Alimogola, or go sleep very well. Michael Baduel of Baranda, Inchel of Big Pladam, Traki, I'll sleep. Money no come now. Slalili Gabriel, two la Lily Manga sleep, Lily Gela sleep, or me, Papa, Narva Lily Mangi, me plus sleep there. So, problem me of Simon or go cheat. Name Lily Cabot, Lomi Plastab, and Lily up me Plastab, Lem and Disla. As one blooming now, walk law. One of me, I'm still conchot, conchot. Okay, second, I'm stop. Then I remember school, long time no got money, no pay school fees, so now I'm stop one time we play it. In this picture, she sits with the newest member of their family, 
born at the care center. She goes out from her home to show where she collects water when she can't go out to the Bumbu River about a kilometer away. Grace's daughter Shelley describes just how difficult it is for her to be in this situation. She explains the different life she lived at Bumayong before the crisis that left them homeless. The people live in squalid conditions. They share common pit toilets. These dugout toilets are located close to a family home. In 2011, Lay's Highlands residents were targeted after they were blamed by Morobians and the rest of Lay City for the spike in crimes around the main bus stops area. Today, these people, whether innocent or guilty, pay the price for the petty crimes that were happening at the bus stops. They say those suffering and living aren't the thugs and pickpockets that harassed people, but families with children and grandparents. Linda Paul is from Finchafen. She lives here at the care center. Her husband died several days ago, the sixth death in the center. He died from suspected tuberculosis. She describes the life they lived before they were chased with their three children and their home destroyed. She also had a message for Prime Minister Peter O'Neill, backed by her husband's relatives who are from Yalibu Pangya, the Prime Minister's electorate. Now living below me and told Pikinini I'm in all right. People are not stop good because the just like condition now people are facing now people are stop. Their makeshift tents cater for more than three families. Together a room big enough for one person is used by up to ten people.
the displaced people live at the care center, they've had two confrontations with landowners who've torched their canvas homes on two violent confrontations. The settlers have dealt with those incidents, but recently the landowner that allowed them to settle on the land has sold the allotment and the people now face the possibility of being evicted again. Neighbors of the settlers along Independence Drive are calling on the government to allocate funds to relocate these people before they are displaced again. Simon Kwame lives with his wife and extended family at the background. He describes life for his family, living in a house made of cardboard boxes and plastic bags. For three solid years, all family blow me. I'm big at Sambal Pikinini, school Pikinini. All the number school here, so Miss Salem Sambal go back to place to Chimbu, or two plus salos, three plus salos Chimbu. One brother sold boy, me all him graded and stuff like that. I'm bogging my exam, but I believe I'm bogging good. I'm depend like you belong in because me plan to got proper light lawyer, law member study, law night or no got good plan desk or table or normal house life. I'm so live long in. I'm this kind life. I'm no got. I'm rain now. Me plan to sit wara lo sell house. Me plan to sit wara na me plan to cook. Na dry season me plan to go down lo bumbu na sit wara lo bumbu. Na cook em me plan to say you sit good la pot na cook or lily. Kain potem, lili potem, mibla ting twelve, thirteen plaman mibla sa kagay nsa sa lili pot. Nasa potem kagay, sambla sa kagay na pulap, sambla mibla nsa pulap. So bed mibla sleep to nuga good la bedding, all pinin isli wanta lo palang. The women in his family are struggling to cope with the environment. His wife was at work, but a family member tells of how they struggle. Na also container em blo mi bla lo xe mani lo avinon kai kai blo mi bla. Tam em mi bla sa salim no line sa salim wara nambot le na mi bla xe mi bla sa xe kai kai bla avinon. Na mi bla sleep le na mol bed blo mi bla sta. It's not just diseases that threaten the life of the people. While Simon was talking inside, just next to his home, a poisonous snake was killed. Some la time and big la morano some something and stab at this land, Mibla Sakilim, this land. Maglon, Maglon is la Poboya. There have been cases of snake bites that caused people to be rushed to hospital. Fortunately, no one has died from them. After the army moved them from the Egan barracks, they camped here. They now occupy a land allotment along Independence Drive given to them by landowners for the last three years. They've lived here. Ako lai ni orga bi pa bilo. Bumayong time maybe bin pa ni mo time or kampo ti mo lai gam na ostap. Osta lai gam na gam tuo rosmo la noga tap lo ngon na mi ante masta bumi mitago na simo kampo ti mo lo kam kumo lo place. Osta ante mi plan trip la yeso kita na. Na lao mi plan mi plan atin tuo rosmo simo lo. Dos ground ni mi plan salip ni sa man kisip ni sa baka min sa na. Kiagi Omba is the wife of the landowner who donated the land for the care center. She explains that the government needs to assist these people because she and her husband have already sold the land to a new owner who might not allow the care center to exist. <laughs> Work for government, but Karim never mitata so Karim Karim stops. Now we are going to talk. We are going to talk. Ground works in business, so now all by go now. Now we are going to have all by go. So government is going to come and look sour. Now we are putting more on the plan now. Die, plant it, die. Every time we plant Karim, Karim come come pay. We pay him come go and mill us. Work for government, but we are going to make mitata so work for him. Now now we now yet. Om dah mantu dah instal mau kiat na. Ucap bah karis TV. Em bau lulu kau mewan teman domina. So, plan di mana dah? Itu plan infant dah penis. Three, four plan all adult all dah. All curable diseases. Now we still face him this life lor this lagi in time now. After three years of living in such situation, we believe the government must come to this level and help him bila.
On two violent confrontations with other landowners, the canvas homes were burned down. They have had six deaths. Just the space of 20 years. To escape the depression and extremely small hot quarters of their canvas homes, the people spend most of their time at a small market stall selling and buying what they can. So now Peter only you sit down or you stand up or you sleep and talk to me go to you. You back come now na tani na lulu lo ke senta ya. Ke senta ba you walk him long and me plus stop the side side me play him na make him. People who live nearby fear that if the government doesn't act to relocate these people, they will continue to suffer and die of curable diseases. Some may argue that these people should go back to their home provinces, but most have been living in Lay City for many years and have lost the links needed to go back. Incident and that law, backside law, Lobomayong, now comes down the Mibla Leana. They've been suffering for so long. So, on the little top room, the solo sema, you mean Makimol, leaders blew me, law, Karim Dislavi blew me. Through law, disaster, and dislagain. Mibla Lugu Mosem, government in no in no respond to Mibla. Government respond to Narbla, where Narbla provinces legally gave in a disla, relocating all man, a disla, government assist all area through very fast. But Mibla, are we part of Papua New Guinea or are we not part of Papua New Guinea? Mibla all citizens, the Mibla all disla man, Mibla paying tax, na government he benefit na staff. Mibla all man, we one kina Mibla buy rice na, two kina Mibla buy matin fish. Mibla all disla man, we Mibla put him. Fortnite going to the pocket ball, mandated all leaders. We need, we plan need assistance, like, very seriously. This line, you know, first time. Welcome back. Traffic jams and traffic violations have become almost a norm in Port Mosby, thus making it even more challenging for police traffic officers who are outnumbered by the motor vehicles on the streets of Port Mosby. In this segment, we highlight the challenges faced by our traffic police officers in the National Capital District. Papua New Guinea's population has increased and so has the motor vehicles on the road. Unfortunately, in Port Moresby, it has come to a point where our existing roads cannot cater for the increasing number of cars. For the six, uh, five to six years, uh, especially in Moresby, uh, the influx of the vehicles has increased. And uh, as you can see, the road is uh, overpopulated with the vehicles. And uh, we also have the, the old vehicles still running on the road. And uh, the roads are getting smaller because of the influx of the, the vehicles that come into the country and especially in Port Mosby. Yeah. Traffic jams and traffic rule violations have become almost a norm in the city thus making it even more difficult for police traffic officers who have to make sure that everyone abides by traffic rules and are safe on the road. And if that wasn't enough, manpower is another issue they face. As I have said, we have uh, 49 members and uh, about 20 uh, general uh, police in a squad, we call them a general squad. And then we have about 12 uh, office staff, the admin staff, and we have uh, 12 accident squad members. And that's a total up to uh, 49. Put in our request to our uh, hierarchies to increase the manpower. 
We have the passouts coming out from Bomana after the uh, training and graduation, but we cannot uh, get those uh, manpower because of the accommodation problem. And uh, I'll leave that uh, with the management. Uh, they are trying to. Uh, they are trying their best to uh, find uh, accommodation so that we'll, we are able to get some passouts. Traffic rule violations include speeding, running a red light, not signaling, not stopping for pedestrians, not using a seat belt, drunk driving, reckless driving, overcrowding, and driving without a license, registration, or insurance. Especially the owners of the motor vehicles, uh, the PMVs uh, and uh, the private vehicles. Uh, uh, one of the I saw is uh, the vehicles are running on the road with uh, broken windscreen and uh, replaced with the plastics and the cardboards and even the uh, floor mat. Yeah, uh, those unroaded unroad motor vehicles are to be removed from the public uh, road. As we speak, we are on a special operation traffic combined operation with NCD traffic, uh, no, traffic headquarters, and highway patrol, and central traffic police. Yeah. The police traffic offices in the National Capital District are also carrying out awareness on road safety. And for the first time, they have also brought along the police band to participate in this awareness. And that's all for this episode. Thank you to all who have participated. And if you have any comments or stories you would like to share, please contact us via the address on your screen or visit us on our Facebook page. For now, enjoy the rest of your day.